Okay, guys, I know the one thing as an educator that kind of gets a little frustrating is the overwhelming amount of information, papers, quizzes, tests, assessments that you have to grade. So I'm going to show you how to use Fluberoo. Fluberoo is a free add-on that can be accessed through Google Docs. So I'm going to use this as an example. So here's a test that you're giving. This is what we're going to do. So let's pretend like we have a four-question test. We're only going to use these four questions here. This is how you access Fluberoo to get Fluberoo to grade this test for you. First thing you want to do is you want to log in and use Google Chrome. And in the top left-hand corner, you're going to click the Apps button. And you're going to go to Google Drive. I'm already logged in. And then you're going to select New, scroll down to More, Google Forms. And when they access this form, what they're going to do is they're going to input their information, the answers from this assessment, into the form, and it's going to get collected into a spreadsheet, which I'll show you here. Let's call this here Fluberoo Test. Okay, so the first question I always ask my kids, and I do last name, first name, and you can put, you know, some help text in there. You're going to select text. I require it as a piece of information that they have to put into the form. And then we're going to add an item. We're going to do class period. And then you might do only enter one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, depending, depending on how many classes you have. That way you'll be able to sort by class period as well. We're going to make that text and it's required. Now, if we go back to what we're looking at, we're looking at a four question test. So what we're going to do is we're going to add four questions here. Shorten it up. Q1, we're going to make it multiple choice. If you look at question one is A through D. So A, B, C, D. We're going to require that as a question. Now you can duplicate. And when you duplicate, what it does, is it copies the previous little form entry you did. So this time it's Q2. But if you notice that question two is FGHJ. So we're going to cycle through that. F, G, H, J. Now you could do A, F, B, G, C, H, and then D, J. You could just do that blanketed all the way through the form, and then that way if it switches from A to F, then you don't have to worry about you know typing that information in. But just for this sake of example, we're just going to do this. Now notice that Q3 is a free response. That's okay. So Q3, we're going to duplicate we're going to do Q3, but this time we're going to do as text. And what it'll do is it will actually match up here, and I'll show you how that works. Their answer to the correct answer, we're going to require that. What we're going to do is after we get done with question three here, we're going to just duplicate that, change it to question four. If I look, question four is A, B, C, D. So we're going to make it multiple choice, A, B, C, D. And we are done. If you look down here, it says show link to submit another response. That way, if you want students to submit another response, if they make a mistake or if they don't have the technology to input this in and you want to use your own laptop or, or a computer, then it'll allow them to just kind of go through and click that. And I'll show you how that works. Now, at the top, you might see something to where it says only allow one response per person and it might require a login. I'm going to leave this unchecked. That way they can submit as many answers as possible. And this actually makes it public. We're going to view this form. This is what the form is going to look like when they access the website. But look right here. This is a giant, long, whatever you want to call it, nasty looking URL. So I highlight it. I hit control C to copy. I come back over here and I go to goo.goal. Goo.goal. Click that. I click control V that pastes that long URL in there and we're going to shorten it up. And so this is what I actually post. And so if I take that and type that in, in this case, I'm just going to just copy and paste. What it'll do is it'll take me directly to the form. But what I like to do is I like to take the test first and I just key it in as my first and last name is key. My class period is key. And then we're going to actually key this in. One is D, two is G, three we're actually going to type in 6500, and four is C. And then we're going to hit submit. And this is what the kids are going to see. They're going to see this submit another response. And so I can submit as many responses as I would like. Okay, so we've submitted our key. So let's pretend like I am a student. I'm student one. I'm in first period. And I'm going to do this a few times here. I'm actually going to key in 
let's say that's 3,500 and C, and I'm going to submit. And then another student, they can submit a response. We'll just call this student two. They're in first period, and they're having a great day. So you know how that is. They just randomly select some stuff here, and we'll do one more. Let's say they're in third period, and they're entering their information in DG. Let's say 6,500, C, and we get submit. Okay, so you're done collecting your data. What do you do next to access it? So you're going to go back up into Google Drive, and you're not going to see any responses. You're going to go back under your Flubaru test form, double-click that, and you'll see something right here that says View Responses. And then I always have my default to Flubaru test, and then in parentheses it says Responses, and then I keep this checked. Always create a new spreadsheet. So when I hit Create, what this is going to do, it's going to create in Google Docs here, it's going to create my responses. These are the three responses from the students, and it's got the key that we put in at the very beginning. And the reason why I do that at the beginning is because I like to see my key up at the top of the spreadsheet. You're going to find add-ons. Click on add-ons. We're going to get add-ons. We're looking for Flubaru. Flubaru. We're going to search for Flubaru. There it is. It's free. We're going to hit the little plus, add it to the document. You only have to do this once. We're going to allow all that good stuff. And so now we have Fluberoo. Fluberoo is going to grade. Now yours is going to say grade assignment. Mine says regrade because I've done this more than once. So we're going to grade the assignment. This is kind of how you can go through if you decide you don't like question one. You could skip the grading. But in this case, we're just going to keep it as normal. Hit continue. In this section, it's going to ask you which one do you want to use as the key. We're going to use our key as the key. And so you'll see down here at the bottom, a little tab pops up for grades. And so Flubaru will do an itemization. You can see right here, question three. They're struggling really badly with question three. Um, and they're still kind of low throughout the test at about a 67 for each question. So it does a little item analysis for you. And it will also allow you to sort this information to sort it. So you collected a bunch of information. You want to sort it by last name for class period one. So I'm just going to highlight those two rows for class period one. And if I wanted to sort that data, you would just go to data, sort. The last name, first name is in column B. And then you would hit sort and it would sort everything for you. Mine's already sorted but just because of the way that it just happens to be in this example. But that kind of gives you an idea how Fluberoo works.